Most of the fandom, however, loves Chiaki. She's probably one of the most beloved characters in Danganronpa. I don't know if this is a bit too fancy or not, but hello, welcome. This is a brand new series that I'm starting called The Danganronpa Files. If it goes well, then I would gladly do more, but if it doesn't, then I'll just leave it to this one episode. However, please tell me in the comments if you enjoy this video, or if you enjoy the concept for more videos like this. It's basically like a character analysis video, but with other stuff like the fandom and other media around the character. Obviously, different episodes will be different length in within video, mainly because it's kind of hard to talk about some characters like from the anime, for example. And as you can tell by the topic of the video, this episode, or the first episode, will be about Chiaki Nanami, where we're going to take a look at her character and everything about it. And as the new detective, well, as new I mean I got fired, but as the fired detective of Danganronpa, let's do this. So you're starting Danganronpa 2, Kameda says hi, and then we get a flashback to Hajime entering the school. Our first instance of seeing Chiaki is seeing her with the rest of the class, which, let's be honest, she doesn't really stand out much and isn't really a character people notice right away, since, you know, that title would go to the ultimate imposter. But if we're actually talking about introductions, you actually first meet her in the Hope Hotel playing the arcade machines, where she's a bit too distracted for introductions, which in turn causes Kameda to yell out her name. She doesn't really say all too much after this, I think the devs wanted to play it up to the fact that she's very antisocial and awkward because, well, she's a gamer. However, she mentions something here that is kind of interesting to say the least, but I'll discuss that in the next chapter. But then right after this we get hit with the... Sleepy. Which something to bring up is, I'm assuming the main reason Chucky's always sleepy all the time is because she's gaming. However, wouldn't her eyes look a bit more tired, just like how Meter eyes were? I know Midori was a bit more focused on their work compared to Chiaki, and well, a lot worse, or worse than Chiaki anyways. But since this was before the Dingerumpa 3 anime came out, I would have figured that her eyes, or Chiaki's eyes in her sprites, would give off the impression that she's kind of always tired. I feel like that would have been a better detail to show how tired she always is compared to, you know, just her mentioning it. Her design is pretty simple too, but the right amount to have an appealing design She's not crazy over the top like Nekomaru or has different coloured hair like Ibuki does, but just, you know, kind of natural and a hoodie, which I'm not too sure if it's a reference to something. However, it kind of reminds me of the enemies in Monami's minigame. In addition to this, it also feels like the hoodie is part of one of her favourite games rather than something original to her. So what I mean is, is that let's say she was a big fan of this game and she decided to get merch of it and then you see her wearing it. So it's more so she bought it because it's one of her favorite series rather than it just being an original to her. Hopefully that's making sense anyways. But that kind of is how I always saw it, so yeah. Oh, and this pin. It's not Gallagher, by the way, like a lot of people think it is. It's original, or it's a part of like an original design, because, well, copyright. But it's meant to represent the old arcade games, because, well, she is the ultimate gamer. I just wanted to point that out, since a lot of people get that part wrong. But now that we've gotten to know Chiaki a lot more, things can only go up, right? So now to talk about her in the story of Danganronpa 2. When I mentioned that Chiaki was mentioning something interesting a bit earlier, it was the fact that if you look at the line she says before, oh sorry, when you look at these lines that she says after beating the game, you can really tell how close she is like to sticking to Monami and giving little comments to help people get on Monami's side more like, she keeps on calling Monami Q or keeps saying that, oh we just need to click the hope fragments and it will all be over, right? She's just trying to encourage the characters or the cast more to get on Monami's side. And well, we already know this because we find out at the end of the game her main goal was to help everyone get better within the program. However, the Hope Fragment idea gets thrown aside in favour of Monokuma's plan. When looking at it, Chiaki keeps to her herself a lot during Chapter 1 and isn't really as vocal as other characters. My guess is that she kind of trusts the ultimate imposter with his plan since 
he keeps mentioning that he doesn't want anyone to be a victim on this island. So from what I can gather, what I think anyways, it seems that Chiaki is kind of entrusting her hope or her belief into the ultimate imposter. So instead she just sticks to herself and tries to help out as best as she can. Obviously this doesn't go as well and it ends up with the imposter being killed, but it's also interesting to note as well is that Chiaki actually calls out Kameda's suspicious behavior in the first trial. Chapter 2, we don't really talk about it for uh, reasons, but I will say is that the only person who pushed Pekka for an answer was Chiaki. The rest of the cast just kind of pushed it aside and casted their votes. She doesn't want the person who died to die without a reason. Chapter 3, so like Chiaki being helpful again, blah blah blah. But maybe it's just me here, but Chiaki seems to say something a bit out of character. I'm not exactly sure if it is or not, but I thought to mention it here just in case. There's a scene where Hajime, Fuyu, Mikan and Chiaki all go to charge in into the Tiddy Typhoon to see if Ibuki is dead or not. And when they realize that the door is locked, Fuyuhiko suggests that it's good to burst down the door. But then Chiaki says, I wonder if that will be possible with two girls here. Which, like, I'm not sure why she would say this. I know she's trying to be worried about the situation, but, like, I always see Chiaki as the person who would be like, oh, just try no matter what. And because of Chiaki's response here, we actually see Fuyuhiko uh, bounce back and say, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, we have to try. And that's when they try to burst down the door. It actually tries to open a bit and Fuyuhiko goes, ah, see, it would have worked. But then Chiaki just replies back with, e yeah, even with two girls here. Which again, I found this comment very unlike Chiaki. I don't know why... Again, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just didn't feel like this was in character for her. Anyways, around here is when Chiaki becomes the Kyoko of the first game, where she helps in class trials, and she says stuff like, you're the only person who can solve this mystery, etc, etc, or pushes the question to the player to answer. Which, you know, there isn't something wrong with that, since, you know, they wanna, they're want mainly doing it so they can have the player answer more, or do more of the uh, puzzle solving, since, you know, you are playing the game after all. But sometimes I'm not a big fan of it, and because of it, it feels like Chiaki gets way more screen time and focus for this reason alone compared to other characters. You could say the same about Kameda, but you gotta remember, Kameda's an antagonist, so it kind of makes a bit more sense. And I'm not saying it doesn't make sense for Chiaki to do it, but I'm just trying to point out that a lot of people have a problem with Chiaki sometimes because they say, oh look, she's being the Kyoko of the first game. And it's not really a good comparison. And I'm not saying Kyoko is not a good comparison, but it's not good to just compare characters to each other since each character is unique on their own. Oh, and spoilers for the end of the game, but I'm kind of really confused on whether Chiaki remembers her time at school or not with the rest of the cast, which is represented in Ding Wong the Free Anime. I'll get to the anime soon within the video, but there are some comments that only kind of line up if this AI of Chiaki within the simulation actually remembers her time at Hope's Peak. The way she talked to Fuyuhiko in Chapter 1 about the party, or how she already knew about the ultimate imposter, which kind of shows as to why she didn't mention his name during Chapter 5 when Hajime was looking through the book. However, this brings up another problem within the game that doesn't really tell us anything. Which is in chapter 4, there was one of the motives which was starving to death. And you can tell by the way Hajime was talking or by the way Sonya was hallucinating that people were food, that it was getting really bad in there. But Chiaki, she was just the same as ever. She was almost the same as if she wasn't being affected by it at all. But then this brings up the question of if everyone did actually die from starvation, would she be the only body left? And if she was the only body left, what would happen? And does Chiaki not eat at all because she's an AI? Does she not need to drink water because she's an AI? And that would also explain her execution, where there was no blood being crushed by a Tetris block. We see Junko basically die the exact same way, being crushed, and you see loads of blood everywhere. But with Chiaki, there's no blood at all. And you could just say that these are all hints for Chiaki being an AI, which, you know, I can totally get that, but it just makes me and other people question the effects of the AI itself. There's also stuff in Chapter 1 where you can see her hanging out with Monami a lot more, which, again, gives more hints as to the start that she is an AI with Monami. A lot of people thought Chiaki and Kameda were guaranteed survivors, but were both taken out in what people, myself included, think was one of the best chapters in Ding Romper history. This ending proves to be a very sad one for the end of Chiaki and Nanami, but in Chapter 6, we actually see her come back to encourage Hajime to create the ending that defies both hope and despair. This also creates a good point for where people kind of fell in love with Chiaki or kind of liked her character a lot more, as she was given a lot more attention in Chapter 5 and Chapter 6 than she did 
with and then the game does with any other character more so. A lot of people here say they don't like how much attention she got during this, but I think it's kind of perfectly fine considering how close Hajime was with Chiaki and well he is the protagonist. But that's kind of it for her involvement in Dingrupa 2. Wait, what's that you ask? Her free time events? <laughs> well, uh, truth to be told here, her free time events is basically just referencing other video games, giving us tiny details about her father, and then saying that she's bad at one video game genre, but then turns out to be dating simulators, which, you know, and then it gets, and then they get all close and they get all blushy around the main pro tag, which again causes more Chiaki lovers to get on board. And there's nothing wrong with this, but like, I just think it's kind of cheesy the way, the way they went about this, being like, oh, I'm bad at one genre, oh, it's dating sims, oh, oh, the protagonist is here to help me. I just think it's very cheesy. Nothing bad, but nothing like groundbreaking or anything here. Her relationship mostly comes from the characters in the second game, as they were her classmates and closest friends. We don't really know anything about her family outside of very, very small details with her father. But outside of this, I think the most noteworthy ones to mention are Hajime, Kameda, Monami, and Chisa. First being one of the closest people to Chiaki, Hajime Hinata. A lot of people would consider them as a canon ship, however, it's kind of iffy on the exact details, since in Dengronpa 3, they would show how they first met, they would show their relationship for each other, but then it kind of just got cut off for Izuru. There is one point where Chiaki acts as if she wants to say something very important and personal to Hajime, but then he goes on with the whole Izuru project and she just kind of cuts herself off for whatever reason. My guess was that she was just kind of nervous to say it. Either way, it is still a bit shaky whether to consider this a canon ship, just like kind of how Izuru and Ruruka were. Either way, they're extremely close with each other, Chiaki helping Hajime realize that talent wasn't everything when he lived in a world where everybody around him would only care about talent. However, Chiaki was a bit too late to this since Hajime didn't realize this till after the events of Chiaki's death. Chiaki and Hajime would often meet up after school, play games together, and they seemed very close and almost as best friends. But we kind of don't really see any conversations they have about anything personal, it's just kind of mostly about talent. And we don't even see them meet up in other places that isn't in front of this fountain. So again, I feel like we should have seen them in a bit more places or situations anyways. But it's quite clear how much both of them meant to each other during the anime and the game. Nagito Kameda, oh boy. This one isn't as much as Hajime, but it's still worth a tour. As you can see with these two, they're some of the smartest characters within the second game, and you can really tell that they do, they both do amazingly well in the class trials. I think this dynamic with being smart together is kind of underrated as they would go through a lot together in terms of being clever. And we even see in the Dingaroon for free anime how much Chucky cares for Kameda when he gets shot. And during the game we see her get really worried about him being tied up in the old building. Next is Monami, where their relationship with Chiaki only existed in Dingrumpa 2 since Monami was created during the Neo World program. But within this, we see that their relationship together, as mentioned before, they kind of hang out a lot with each other, they try to help each other a lot, and as much as I want to say that they're colleagues, they seem more so friends than anything. So apart from being like in this uh, sort of close friend relationship, there isn't really much else. However, a lot of people like to associate Chiaki with Monami or Monami with Chiaki since their aesthetics blend well with each other. The last is Chisa Yakazome, whom is the Dengrumpa 2's class homeroom teacher during their time at Hope Speak Academy. There is a lot of moments within the anime where Chisa and Chiaki have these meaningful and deep conversations with each other. It also helps a lot that she is super nice to Hajime and even defending him at one point against Juzo. But this is kind of Chisa's character. She's a very kind-hearted person who, who only wants the best for everybody and to help as much as she can. And in this case, she's always taken on a liking to Chiaki and tries to help with her problems whenever she can. There's even a point where Chiaki becomes the class rep and she kind of denies it at first, but then Chisa kind of helps her ease into it and tries to talk to her about it. But this trust with Chisa would only get worse, as it would lead to her death. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. So, the Dinger on the Free anime. So I have a lot of problems with Chiaki's inclusion in the Dengarumpa 3 anime, which I talked about a lot before on the channel, but I'll mention it again just in case. My problem with Chiaki in Dengarumpa 3 is that she seems as this, like, godsend to everybody. 
and it really bugs me. To me, it would have been more impactful and much better if she was only super important to Hajime and the Izuru, as this one makes a lot of sense. She helped Hajime through a lot of situations and tried to help them talk a lot more, and they're very impactful for each other. And in my opinion, if it was just about Hajime and Chiaki, it would have been a lot more special on its own. But having her important to everybody, in my opinion, just kind of ruins that impact that she had towards Hajime and Izuru. I'm not saying the other characters wouldn't care for her death, but since all, all of them are still friends. But it's quite clear to tell that Hajime and Chiaki's relationship was a lot more special and important than her relationship with Nekamaru, Gundam, Hyoko, etc. You get my point. So in my opinion, the thing with the cast could have gotten brainwashed without Chiaki being this godsend and then dying for it. But that's my stance on it. A lot of people would disagree with me, but that's how I feel about it. Either way, during the anime, we get to see a lot of Chiaki and even her relationship with the other classmates, which is pretty nice to see. We also even see that Chisa was the one who helped to bring the Dingopa 2 class all together during the first episode. Well, apart from Midorai. But when she got taken away from her class for about 8 months, it's said that Chiaki helped take care of the class in terms of schedules, doing activities, and just generally helping all around. This is nice and all, but this was also during Kameda's suspension from school, which he was gone way longer than 8 months. And they even mentioned that they hadn't been able to get in contact with Kameda. So when Kameda does come back, he teams up with Chiaki when going to kill Junko, which in my opinion shows that out of the entire Ding Ripper 2 cast, excluding Hajime of course, Kameda seems to trust Chiaki a lot more or a lot uh, greater than the other rest of the cast. After these events, Chisa gets kidnapped by Junko and Mukuro from trying to save Chiaki and Kameda, but when kidnapped, she gets brainwashed and turns Chisa into a remnant of despair, which they purposely uses Chisa's trust to mess and trick Chiaki into a death trap. Following up shows a full episode dedicated to Chiaki's death, where she has to go through a death maze, and well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen this before. Some people actually get really uncomfortable by this scene, which I can totally understand. The whole scene is basically just her trying to cling onto life as Junko kind of taunts her the whole way through. But during this, we see that the entire Ding Ripper 2 cast gets brainwashed into despair, apart from Midorai as we see him escape Junko later on. Oh, and now we have a really impactful scene here to finish off Chiaki with her talking to Izuru. And it's kind of painful to watch this honestly, it's it's kind of it's kind of disgusting, but we see that this affects Izuru greatly as they start to cry and pick up their hairpin in order to remember her. And we even see in Hope Park many many years later that Hajime still holds on to this hairpin to remember her. Is the anime a good representation for Chiaki's character? Yes and no, it's a very mixed bag. Hi, 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 Jackie. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I, I've got so many feelings on me, and I need like time to really sort myself out. Oh, now we're getting into some controversial stuff here. One is Chucky and the fandom. Now. Let me get this out of the way before I say anything more. Chiaki is a very popular character. I would argue she is one of the most popular female characters in the Dingeropa history. And by far, she is the most popular female character in Dingeropa 2. Now, is there something wrong with this? Of course not. However, when something gets popular, a lot more people start to hate on it. But there are many points that I see people bring up as to why they hate Chiaki or dislike her character. One reason I see people call her waifu bait, which saying that it's quite obvious she is given special treatment just like Kyoko had in Dengrampa 1, which I can agree to an extent, but I would like to see it as the main reason she was like this was because we were playing as Hajime, you know, the protagonist, the person who was affected by Chiaki the most. And it's why this very meaningful conversation at the end of Dinger Upper 2, a lot of people see this as Chiaki just being favoritism, which again, you gotta remember, it's Hajime. Another reason I see people say they dislike Chiaki is because they think she is bland or basic. Now, this is a very subjective thing to say because, well, when you dislike or like a character, it's heavily based on opinion. But when people say that she's bland like it's a fact and then question why she's so popular, she's clearly popular for a reason, and I'm not saying all Chiaki haters are like this. But I find a lot of people who hate Chiaki to be very rude towards people or get mad at the fact of how popular she is. You can call me that I'm defending Chiaki and say that I have a bias, but if you already have seen my tier list based on my personal favorites, you'll see that I always put her in the middle section 
because I don't like or dislike her, I kind of just have her in the middle of everything. And she's even one of my least favorite Ding Rampa 2 girls. But is Chucky bland? Well, I'm not going to say she is, because she doesn't express her emotions as much as other characters in the series do, but I do notice her being a band or basic gets brought up a lot more in the fandom than anything else I see. And we even see people who call others who like Chucky bland or basic within their opinions, which, you know, it's pretty bad to insult other people based on their favourite characters, but, you know, it's the internet after all, what will you do? Honestly, I think the main reason why she's very popular or so popular in the fandom is just the way she was at the end of the Ding Rong for 2. Since again, it's like her connection to Hajime that makes the player feel a lot more special to her character. And well, I notice a lot of people whose favorite character is Chucky tends to like her a lot more at the end of the game than anywhere else. And I'm not saying this is for everybody. I've just seen a lot of people play this game blind. And let's say they do their tier list mid game. Chucky's normally around the middle or somewhere around there. But then I notice that she spikes up within the tier list of people during the end of the game. So I honestly think it's a combination of that and also her talent, which you know, I'm not even gonna question why. What else is there to say? It's Chucky Nanami. She's caused a lot of happy and sad moments for the community. She's been the center of so much fan art and icons. Heck, she's even had an official bunny figure made. I've made a video in the past talking about Chucky's death after impact. And throughout a lot of this, I've noticed that the amount of impact she's had, not only for the cast, but the, for the fandom too, is quite insane. And even if this is the end of the Ding and Romper timeline, I don't see her being forgotten anytime soon, even if people hate her. For me, she was always going to be in a neutral, and I think she's neat as a character. But you know what they say about starting a new game? Always be prepared for a game over. Even if I cease to exist, even if you guys never remember me again, that doesn't mean I will completely disappear. As long as everyone continues to move forward toward the future we created together, I will never disappear. What I lived for, fought for, and risked my life for will still exist. Hajime, you've had it wrong this whole time. 